Why do people laugh hysterically when this woman sings? She's not singing anything funny. <laughs> and even more amazing, when they stop laughing, they all are healed of incurable diseases. Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Life after death experiences and angelic communications are on the increase. Terminally ill patients whom doctors have given no hope are unexplainably cured. People are being mysteriously protected from natural disasters. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, examines this invisible world on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. My guest, Vicki Jameson Peterson, is a woman that when she sings, people have just a great desire to laugh. And whereas in the natural, we have found that there is wonderful things that happen when you laugh. In the supernatural, it's even better. People are instantly healed of, well, you told me cancer. Tell cancer. me about that. Uh, yes, it happened uh, three years ago in Birmingham, Alabama. And you see, I have had a healing ministry. I have been singing healings for many years. I, I know, and as a matter of fact, I, I can't let this program uh, finish without saying that Several years ago, you laid hands on my wife, and my wife literally says she left her body and touched heaven, and she always had a fear. Even though she knew that she would go to heaven someday, she had a fear of death. Well, do you know after she had that experience, she has zero fear of death. Isn't that As a wonderful? matter of fact, she was trying to, between you and me, she was trying to figure out how we both could get to heaven together. Together. But <laughs> I think people who love each other want to do that. But, no, but, but seriously. All the sting was removed. No the, fear of No death. fear. Isn't that, well, when we know and are assured where we're going, and we know the one who will take us there, then we understand there's no fear. But this woman who was healed three years ago uh, was healed through laughter and singing. I sing healings, have for years, but... It goes back to four years be before today when this began to occur. As I would sing healings, the laughter came. And we can talk about that in a moment. But this woman in the service was healed of cancer. She was distended. Uh, she says she was about the size of a seven-month pregnancy, and I know her. Was this like a tumor that yes, caused her? Yes, yes. And it was in her uterus. And she uh, had been to doctors. And I knew that she needed to be healed. I had known her through the mm -hmm. years. I said, come to this service. And she came, and I began to sing healings, and I began to sing, cancer is healed. And when I did, the power of God came upon her, and her, her skirt all started to fall off because the, the size began to diminish, and the tumor disappeared. And she came up. I, I said, come up to the front. And when she did, the glory and power of God was wonderful upon her. And when I reached out to touch her, his presence just caused her to go back quite a distance. And all the ushers who were with her, and they hit a plant, and that all fell. She stayed on the platform laughing. She laughed maybe for an hour to two hours. And she would go, whew, whew. it felt like fire to her, and laughed and laughed. And she came to my services for one to two years. Now she's traveling around the world, taking the same laughter with healing. No, no cancer. No cancer. None. Absolutely, totally and Was healed. it an instant healing? Yes, or it gradual? was instant. It was instant, it, is like this, that. Now, I know that for years, when you sing songs, you speak, actually you sing Specific words, words and specific uh, healings. And, and, when and did people this first, are healed. When did this first start? I mean, that's, I, I know you're a singer, and so... Uh, just 26 keep... years ago, uh, when I was called to minister, I didn't know what that meant. It was mm -hmm. all very unusual to me. And I, not being a theologian and not understanding any of that, I just wouldn't do, I wouldn't go in ministry. I wouldn't do it because... I said to God, you know, I'm a woman, of course he knew that. I don't have the education and I don't have any doors. None of those things. And so 
Uh, he said, will you go where I want you to go? Will you do what I want you to do? And will you be what I want you to be? And when I said yes, I was gradually restored. I was invited to speak for a ladies' luncheon. And uh, the ladies there, 600 of them in Dallas, Texas, had many of them prayed that I would live. And so I stood what, what as their was speaker. Wrong with you? Blood clots were hitting my lungs, and I was surviving it. And that, that sounds, having had surgery, that sounds pretty very serious. Uh, I was on blood thin. Yes, it was. And so when I stood to speak, I said, don't blame God for what happened to me. And a cloud showed up. And I don't know if anyone else saw it. I was intrigued. I'd did never, you, you saw I, this I, Oh, yes, I did. And then uh, the next time I said it, I said, don't blame God for what happened to me. Because people blame God for their sickness. And he doesn't make us sick. He isn't schizophrenic. And so the cloud came down lower. And the third time I said, don't blame God for what happened to me. I was in the cloud. So then I said, if you want to know Jesus, if you want to be healed, come to the front. And these women ran to the front. And they stood two, three, and four deep. And I went to lay hands upon them. Never had done that, but that seemed mm -hmm. natural. And I reached out to touch the first woman. And when I did, she fell back. And it was the power of God. I, I was amazed and I extended my arm and when I did, every person in the line that I pointed to fell down too. It was just like cordwood and then I fell upon them. And th we didn't have a script for this. I had never witnessed anything like this. I was still in this cloud of his presence. And my mother and another lady came, they picked me up and they just directed me through the room, and this was a chandeliered ballroom of the Hilton Hotel. And this was an elegant luncheon that turned into a brawl. <laughs> and women were draped over the tables, they were under the tables, and they were laughing. And I, th there would be up to 100 people on the floor experiencing God's power. And the waitresses and waiters came out because they heard this was noisy and they would fall under the power of God. Well, you'd say, well, what is the purpose? It's when something greater than you comes into your presence. Something's going to give, and it's not going to be God. What happened to these women? They were healed, and they were refreshed, and they were amazed. And when I left the auditorium, everyone I passed fell. And it, it was, I thought, I'm dangerous. I can't be let out of my room again. <laughs> and when I went out in public, I thought, how can this be? But then I learned it was the discretion of God that it was as he would will, but there would be little tiny spurts of laughter through these many years of ministry. But it was four years ago when the laughter became so no, tell me about Obvious. that point. At that point, I was praying, and I was looking to God to change situations in my life. Oh, by the way, whatever happened to the physical condition that you had? Remember when you first started? Healed of blood clots perfectly, absolutely, totally. And uh, when I got in the plan of God, my health began to be great, and it was great for many years. I was so, healed of cancer later. Uh, many years later, and that's oh, still that's another kind of, story. That's just incidental. <laughs> I mean, there are people that are watching us right now <laughs> that wondering. say, oh, well, I, I want cancer. to grab hold of this type of healing. But tell me about four years ago, what happened? Four years ago, I was praying and I was fasting two hours, three hours, four hours a day. Some days I would skip. And when I came from that extended period of time in back to minister, uh, you reminded me of a story and I, uh, I had forgotten that, but I was on our ladies' retreat in the Pocono, in the mountains. Mm -hmm. It was an elegant time. Women were dressed beautifully. And everything was in order. And I was speaking the final night at the banquet. And the night before when I spoke, I noticed I felt a little giddy, a little, we, this is not a nice saying, but I like it, light in my loafers. And I just felt just a little percolating humor. And this night as the banquet was being held, I walked behind the podium to present my speech and to minister to the sick. 
when I did, the power of God came upon me, and I, I was knocked to the floor, where I lay laughing. I, chickens lay. I wasn't laying. <laughs> I was rolling, actually, if you really want to know the truth. I was laughing so hysterically that I couldn't get up. Do, do, I had fallen, and I couldn't get up. Doesn't this embarrass you? No, it felt so good, I couldn't get up anyway. So what is the deal? I mean, if I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed. When you're under the power of God and you experience God in that full dimension, everyone fades away. They're, they're insignificant. You're not considering that. You're no longer that. a man pleaser. Is that no. What you're <laughs> and so then my friend, who is married to a doctor also, I'm married to a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine God's sense of humor that I'm married to a psychiatrist? And this happens to me. It mm. has stretched him, I can tell you. My friend's married to a physician, and she was a speaker. She thought she'd never seen me do this, and she thought I, she needed to help cover for my humiliation. She walked up to the podium and says, do any of you know this is that? It's a song. Well, they all laughed, and she said, do you know this is that? And they all laughed even harder. And when she said it a third time, the power of God came upon her and hit her and knocked her backwards. There was a wall, but we didn't know there was also a door in the wall, and she fell out the door and disappeared. Didn't but hurt her at all. I was going to ask that She you wasn't injured. Something. It was the same level floor. And I still couldn't get up. So the pastor's wife comes now because all of her speakers are falling out. And she's going to bring order back to this meeting, and she falls in the floor. And the women laugh even more. And so I could observe everything going on, and I laughed as hard as the ladies laughed. Her husband came to, he's the pastor, and he took off his coat, laying hands on ladies to be healed. And I, upon the, it, on the floor, I could see the ladies. They were flying through the air. No one was injured. That was the demonstration of great power coming from God. And, you know, in the natural, it would injure people. And many would say, well, what is the purpose? Why would this be? Well, we can look at Exodus. We can look into the Old Testament and see that when Moses went into the tent in Exodus 40, he could not stand for the cloud of the glory of God. And so when we come into his presence, and it is the fullness of his presence, the Proverbs tells us that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. We also see in the Psalms in his presence his fullness of joy. And so when we come into fullness of God's presence, there's a great fullness of joy. Well, even in the natural realm, doctors are finding that when you see comedies, something happens in your body to help the body heal itself. Yes, we were created to be self-healing. That is true. And I collect research and information on laughter therapy because the world has learned and they are learning that so much laughter can produce a painkiller that is a hundred times more potent than morphine and that when we laugh until we weep there is an anti uh, there is a, a killer for bacteria in our tears however it only lasts for a limited amount that, of time. That's what I was going to ask you. What is the difference between this natural laughter and what you're talking about? Well, the natural laughter was created of God, and it does a great work. Mm -hmm. And it certainly does cause the brain to do unusual uh, jobs that it was created to do. And it does last for a period of time. Norman Cousins did research because of his own pain, and he discovered that if he would watch a film such as the Marx Brothers, that 10 minutes of laughter would produce a certain amount of time of release from pain, but it was in a time frame. Mm -hmm. But now this that we are encountering, where we see that God is involved so very dramatically and so dynamically that when his presence comes in, we will see healing such as this woman who was healed of cancer, who is today uh, Vicki, ministry. I've got an idea. What? I want Vicki to sing when we come right back. Get ready to laugh, to cry, to experience God, and to be healed.
We will return to It's Supernatural right after this. Hello, we're back. I know you could hardly wait because Vicki Jameson Peterson, four years ago, walked into another level with the Spirit of God. You were talking a bit about it. Your husband, who's a psychiatrist, was there. What happened? Well, I was in Manhattan in New York City, and I was... Uh, if you've got to be anywhere, that's the place that's to be. That's the place to be. I love Manhattan. And I was in speaking for a conference, a women's conference. There were several speakers. My husband, when he can, goes with me uh, when he isn't practicing medicine. And he was with me on this trip. And I walked into the auditorium for the first afternoon speaker. And she got up to speak, a dynamic woman of God. And when she did, the power of God came upon me in such strong way, I fell on the floor. And my husband was standing there, and I could not get up. I was laughing so hard. And I was the only one in the auditorium laughing to make it even more strange. I would say yes. that the focus was on Vicki. <laughs> and I couldn't get up, and it felt so good. You know, this laughter of God, it is, it is so beyond what we humans can experience. But you could imagine, my husband's never seen me behave like this. And so when the meeting was over, the speaker, my husband, and I were in the limousine going back to the hotel. And I said to her, can you tell me what's happening to me? I said, for the last few meetings that I've been speaking in, I'm in the floor laughing. And I said, this has never happened before, and people are not going to invite me to speak to come fall on the floor and laugh. And she said, oh dear, she said, you're coming into a new level of anointing in God, you will be able to stand. My husband said, I'm so relieved to hear that. He said, I thought she had a brain tumor. And of course, I was, he was kidding. No, he was serious. No, he was as serious as he could be. And he said, uh, I was going to have... That's uh, why you were falling. Going to have a CAT scan of her brain. I thought she had a tumor in her mm. brain. And I have to tell you, it has stretched him because he is a very logical, intellectual, a scholar, and a magnificent physician, and a great diagnostician of the brain. I mean, his specialty is the brain. And so to suddenly see his companion, who's always been sensible, always logical, made things work fun, unusual, but never far out, it has stretched him. But he is a changed man because of it. Now, when you sing or speak, sometimes this laughter jumps off of you and Under goes people. on on everyone? Not everyone, Most no. people? Many, most. Uh, that's why I enjoy going and staying in several services, because uh, I have discovered that those who are the most weary and need joy and laughter the very most. They're the first. They are the first. The most weary, the most ill. Tell me what's happening. Just give me a few things of what's happening to people when they, when the Spirit of God comes on them and they start laughing. Uh, yes, I have seen uh, a lady in a church where I was for an extended meeting for 10 months. Uh, that's extended. <laughs> that's extended. And so when you're 10 months with people, you really do uh, know them and know the validity of their story. It isn't just the little quick kind of a thing, but you see a sustained change in their lives, and the laughter seems to be a very great therapy of the Holy Spirit. And this lady, after she had been in my services laughing for months, I'd be there a week to two weeks, and then would take a break and come back. She wrote a letter to me, and I had her stand and tell the church. She said, I was one of the meanest women you have ever met in your life. People didn't dare cross me because I made their lives miserable. And she began to laugh in front of this audience, and she said, people in my work cannot believe how I have changed. God had so rearranged her that she had softened, and she was a joy to be around, and it was a witness. When she went to work, people in her workplace would begin to laugh. The joy of the Lord 
would get you mean, off not, on them. Not just in a church. She would it just would go, go to work. She was just a, a conduit from God. That, and, and I've seen that right, happen. You're a conduit. And when you sing, it's kind of double. You're a conduit for the laughing, but you're a conduit for physical healing. Absolutely. When you, now, when you sing specific words, are they just words, are they words that God is telling you? Where do these words come from? Uh, well, it's a multifaceted thing. It is from God. It is from His guidance within me. And when I first began, I would sometimes feel the pain in my body, and so I would sing it out. I, I just learned that many years ago, singing, and then I found out that it, David the psalmist sang. So as you sang about the pain in your body, other people were healed? Yeah, and the pain would leave me. That's the way leave I Leave you, but would, would other They would be healed, be healed of this, that pain. That's the way I would know. But now, I just know that I know. It's a knowing from Vicky, God. Vicki, I'm going to get some people upset with me if you don't start singing now. Well, let us do it. <laughs> okay. Would you like to be healed? Would you like to be whole? Would you like to receive joy that you've never known? This is your day to receive joy and blessings from God. You're healed in your eyes right now. Cataracts dissolve. You're healed. You're healed in your throat right now. Goiters disappear. Your thyroid is restored. You're healed now. Healed now by our Lord. Your shoulder is restored. You're healed in your arm. Your bones are mended now. Disease is gone. Your back is healed. Discs and vertebrae are restored now. You're healed now. Kidneys are healed now. Kidneys are healed now. The liver is cleansed of disease. You're healed now. So healed now. The breast is healed. Tumors dissolve. Your heart Cancer leaves you now. Your intestines are cleansed right now. Your colon is healed right now. Laughter comes upon you right now. And your knees are restored. You didn't think you knew that one, did you? But they are whole. You thought he forgot you. No, he didn't forget you. Your feet are healed. Even your toe is healed. Insomnia's healed. Your neck is whole now. You can move your neck. Try it. You can do it by his power. He's not only restoring, but he's recreating in this hour. You're healed in your gums right now. Oh yes, receding gums are healed. You've had a problem with a tooth, just one. But he wants you to know how involved he is in your life. The abscess leaves. Absolutely. Leaves you now, migraine headaches leave. Totally, this instant by his power. And you're healed of a skin disease. Check it. You will see that you are healed. A sports injury in the hip. Totally healed. I promise you, you're healed. If you'll just check yourself, you'll see. By his power. 
then arthritis bows. It bows as joy comes upon you right now. You see, it is his plan to make you ever wet whole, from the top of your head to the sole of your foot. It's not only is he healing you, but he is restoring. There is an injury that wouldn't heal, an incision, but now you can check it out. It's healed by his power, healed by his glory, healed in this hour. Becky, I feel like singing right now. Sing with me. <laughs> but I'm not a singer, but I will tell you, I heard about ears. Did you? Ears are being opened yes. right now, and the prostate is being healed. Oh, it's yes. almost as Vicki was singing, the windows of heaven were opened up. And when the windows opened up, I'll tell you a secret. Once they open, whether we say the word, whether Vicki sings the word or not, it's yours. If you'll only believe, and there are people that need to know Jesus, you need to open your heart up to Jesus right now. Make him your Lord. Repent and believe that he loves you. Believe in his love greater than anything else in the world. And remember, there is a love of God. There's nothing to compare. Thank you.